Mm -hmm. I was pushed away. I never wanted to leave Ghana, but it got to a point, right? I was underprivileged. Um, and in a way, I thought that in Ghana, there's a bit of a classy system, believe it mm -hmm. or not. If you are poor in Ghana, mm -hmm. you will know that you are poor. Yeah, poor, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because the rich is ultra rich and yeah. the poor is poor, like really poor. And it seems like the rich people always get their way around. Mm -hmm. So I realized that going to secondary school, going to university, I wasn't getting what I wanted to pursue or because okay. we couldn't afford. Okay. Echo, echo, echo city. Okay, so I know most of you don't understand the local language, but he's asking me whether. <laughs> yes, so thank so, you very much for checking me out. This is a Kosim Singh. Okay. If this is your first time checking on my YouTube channel, kindly subscribe. I have a brother here with me. We've known each other for the past, let's say, 20 years, 20 plus it's crazy, years. It's isn't it? But we've yeah. met ourselves. This is the second the time. The second time. Yeah, believe. we've known each other more than 20 <laughs> years, but we've met just twice. Yes, um, he's a Ghanaian born here, but he's working in Europe. Is it Europe? Is okay. is is, is, is no, UK yeah. part of Europe? They call it mainland Europe and UK. So we, they have mainland Europe okay. and then UK. Okay. But it's all Europe. Okay, yeah. so he's you know, been living. You know, UK is a it's an island. You for real? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Wow. You see, he's <laughs> learned more of the UK thing. Let's come back to Ghana. Yeah, where do you Where do you come from in Ghana? So I was born in Kumasi, um, a place called um, Amokom. Amokom. Stadium. Yeah, I've been but, there before. Yeah, but the thing is, as an Ashanti, I'm supposed to be from my mother village which is lake road Nyaso. um that would be difficult still in yeah. ashanti region so it's in ashanti, oh, okay. ashanti region yeah okay um i so kumase i only came to accra because i was going to Lagos university mm -hmm. of ghana mm -hmm. yeah and there's then, there's this mm -hmm. story let me catch it there's this story being shared with me the first time you set foot in uk mm -hmm. and then you had to leave your family's house to go fend for yourself That's it, yeah. and now you are in the military mm -hmm. uk army right That's it, yeah. tell us a little bit about that story i mean the first time i mean that idea that came into your head i, I need to leave ghana go to uk be in the military how did it start so basically um if you've watched my videos before mm -hmm. i was pushed away i never wanted to leave ghana but it got to a point right i was underprivileged um and in a way, I thought that in Ghana, there's a bit of a classy system, believe it okay. or not. If you are poor in Ghana, mm -hmm. you will know that you are poor. Yeah, poor, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because the rich is ultra rich and yeah. the poor is poor, like really poor. And it seems like the rich people always get their way around. Mm -hmm. So I realized that going to secondary school, going to university, I wasn't getting what I wanted to pursue or because okay. we couldn't afford. Okay right okay. for example i wanted to go to all boys school kumasi mm -hmm. high school right i went there i had grade 11 and they, they they've put in it on the notice board mm -hmm. that it's only grade 8 that can mm -hmm. go to that school and i saw someone with grade 28 being in that school being in because that school of money because they could pay at that point i realized you know i need to go away mm -hmm. and then come back with some substance okay it's sad that i will have to think that way yeah so straight after university all my mind was set to go outside and hustle mm. and then come back. And I got there. I like to travel. Okay. And then I got to know that you can join the British Army okay. as a Commonwealth soldier. So okay. Commonwealth country, if you are part of a Commonwealth yeah. country, and those who were colonized by, by the, the Brit British. Yeah. British. So I realized that the money was good and I wanted <laughs> money and I wanted yeah. to travel. So uh -huh. that was the pull factor. And 16 years after that, 16 years in the army. Can you believe that? Straight 16 years. 16 years. Yeah. Whoa. Hey. I don't know. I don't. I know people don't ask this question. Even if I ask, you know, answer. Have you killed anyone? No. Because he's, in the, he's not killed anybody. But no. how was it like being in the army as a Ghanaian? I mean, from the beginning, was it like cool, 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 or you had to, you know, adjust with certain things? How was it like? If if you've ever been in the army, right, it's mm. all about taking orders, being given okay. orders, and okay. then taking orders, and that is communication. Mm -hmm. And that was when I realized that we don't have only one, even different accent of English. Yeah. So my selection was in Glencoe, which is in you know sunny 
Scotland. Okay. That was the first time I realized that Scottish people had a different accent. Yeah. And yeah. if you ha if you are still recovering from your cultural shock, mm -hmm. and the first thing you experience mm -hmm. is a thick Scottish accent, oh. you will realize that yeah. you don't understand English. English. <laughs> <laughs> so my my selection, I don't know how I managed to pass mm -hmm. because I was just following people, yeah, people just yeah. following people. They yeah. say something, I don't understand that. I follow the, the yeah. person I'm in, in front, yeah, of, in front me, of me. Yeah. So that was the first cultural shock. Second one was straight away. You don't get the jokes mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. you don't get the jokes when they say a riddle you, you are not able to answer mm -hmm. it now you are beginning to think you are stupid yeah because they don't understand why you don't understand, understand. yeah you know what i mean yeah. so that was another thing taking um orders was difficult but with time i adjusted and then another thing was this there were some jargons i was holding a lot of pizza boxes mm -hmm. that i didn't eat it was the whole troop who finished eating and me being a good boy decided yeah, to pick it up that that's a that's a ghanaian vibe yeah the ghanaian vibe i saw a young guy right who just looked at me and went you fat bastard and the word bastard yeah. just got into me yeah and i'm like you are a 17 year old calling me a bastard i was like 23 when i joined yeah. i nearly had a fight with them and i realized <laughs> that it was a banter okay yeah it means you eat a lot Surely mm. I didn't eat all that. Oh, but okay. When you are holding that, they go like, "Hey, so you ate all that?" All that yeah. So that's another jargon. Say, "Oh, you fat bastard!" So you you ate all you that. Ate all that. But wow. he was joking. So I used to pick up a lot of fights. Yeah. Whoa. You know, <laughs> because of that. But that was it. That was the culture shock. But I grew up into it. Mm. Yeah. And now you're cool. I'm very cool. Like there was a point I was tipped to go for officer, mm -hmm. and because of the culture shock, I turned it down. Because I thought I wouldn't get it. Get I didn't it. Oh, get okay. It. You know I mean? Okay. I didn't get. I didn't get it. If you told me to, you know, lead a whole like troop. Yeah, troop. You know, it the, was... you know, the communication skills were in there. And then when I realized, when I got all the jargons, when I found my way around things, mm -hmm. I was too old for too it. Too old for yeah. that. So oh, yeah, crazy. that's my that's my experience. But it's been a good journey. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been to places where I think normal people find it difficult, difficult going. to go yeah. like if you go to ascension island i worked in ascension island falkland island um you know afghanistan yeah Ooh. places like that where do you take the flight <laughs> that place i'll never go <laughs> where do you... so today you are in afghanistan which mm. is so sunny mm -hmm. um you know a bit sad yeah. you're missing your Dangerous. family and then straight after that I'm spending my 26th birthday in the middle of the ocean in Portugal. That's yeah. how it works. Yeah, it works. Yeah. So good. And then, yeah. and then uh, dealing with the family as well. Yeah. Um, there's this bold step that you've taken. I know you were living with your family in the UK. Yeah. And then you made a decision to bring them to Ghana. Yeah. But with you, I feel like you were so okay being in the army. Mm -hmm. You were protected in a way. Mm -hmm. And sending your family back to Ghana to live here. And now you're in Ghana visiting them. You gonna go back? Yeah. Yes. What What made you make that decision mm. to let your family come reside in Ghana instead of being in the UK? Yeah. Um. One thing is, you know, going going abroad, mm. right? It's, it's stages. I don't know if everybody goes through that stages, but first, it's so new to you. You go to a place where you you are getting paid. The mm. light stays on twenty four seven. Yeah. Internet. 24 7 no yeah. one is going to tell you you are in your final minutes yeah you know what i mean yeah everything is good so you get used to it you, you like and then later mm -hmm. you get used to it and then it gets to a point that the stress mm -hmm. in the system right? okay you want to Start run away to, from yeah. that system if you can afford to sustain yourself in a third world country a less mm -hmm. a more like relaxed place mm -hmm. that is why we have a lot of white old people settling in australia oh, spain okay. okay even in parts of africa africa yeah. a lot of yeah you, we hear about afro afro americans but mm -hmm. there are lots of white people moving, moving to, to yeah okay. romania um spain is more mm -hmm. portugal mm -hmm. greece okay you know what i mean yeah. um it's, as I said, it's a stage. Okay. You get to a point, it gets so stressful. For me, I'm doing this for my mental health. Okay. And another thing is I want to live mm -hmm. a, a fulfilled life. life yeah. It depends on your dreams in, in, in life, right? Mm -hmm. My dream is to one day set something up. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And if you are giving £20,000 in UK, mm -hmm. the best you can do with that is to deposit for a mortgage. 
right? Mm -hmm. So use it as a mortgage, a mortgage yeah, yeah. deposit for yeah, a house. A house, yeah. But if you are giving twenty thousand pounds in Ghana, there are a lot of things. There's you a, can build a with lot it. of things yeah. you can do with it. So that's one thing. And again, it was for my my son. Mm -hmm. um, he was showing signs of autism. When you were speaking to him, you were like, why are you not talking? Oh, yeah, okay. He okay. was showing signs of autism. Okay. And he was being streamlined into that level. That level. You know, yeah. Mm. And then at the end of the day, you end up in an autistic school mm -hmm. and then you accept your situation. Yeah. And then you start yeah. living like that. And I realized that, you know, what, well, most of us were not normal when we were growing yeah. up. Yeah. But the system, mm -hmm. the area, yeah, you know, our way, the community yeah. will yeah. change a lot of things. Yeah. That's another reason why I brought um, wow. this started. But it's also a strategy mm -hmm. because whilst my wife is here, all my investment is we'll being here, here. Yeah. is coming here. She is here looking after it. I come here, I don't know, even talking to like builders and stuff yeah. like that, I don't do it. Yeah. She does it she because does it. she's in the system. Yeah. Right, so yeah. she is going to hold my hand. So whilst mm -hmm. I'm there, she's making the mistakes. Okay. And if she makes a mistake, I am still working in the UK and I can support it's her. Support So okay. as soon as things are okay, I come. I start making the mistakes. Mm -hmm. I will not even make mistakes. Yeah, because, because she's, she's already, already made yeah, doing. It. So that's the tactics that we are using. Okay. So it's like she becomes like the house manager. That is it. Yeah. Manager. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I'm. Um, um, you are right, you are right, but there's a point if you go abroad and you're able to invest in Ghana or in any place in Africa, yeah, and that investment can keep you going, mm -hmm. and you can come to Cape Coast and stay in a moderate place, mm -hmm. and you can go to all the nice places and have a peace of mind. Since I've been here, right, I've not really had a dirty, um, dirty December and okay. all those stuff, yeah. but my mental stability is there mm -hmm. mental yeah. health yeah. trust me so if you can afford a third world country which is relaxed when mm -hmm. i say you can afford in 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 our house we've got like a two phase of electricity when okay. one goes down you yeah, can yeah. change it yeah and we still pay yeah right and then there are some places that we have borehole mm -hmm. if you can afford yeah, that then yeah. you don't you, you unplug yourself from the grid from the grid if yeah. you can buy um solar solar yeah stuff like that yeah. so these are the basic things that we run away from okay you know what I mean? okay and if you have that, I think you will die a happy person. He <laughs> no, wants to die and be buried in the soil. Yeah. Hey, so um, I, I'm, I'm loving the conversation. We're going to go to my village, Afringwa, because uh, he's been supporting my the Afringwa School Library. Just a yes. Bit. No, plenty. <laughs> I mean, bit. he's been supporting. So we're going to go to Afringwa and check the place out. Thank you very much for checking us out. Put up a comment and share with me. Do you agree with some of the things that he said about moving to Africa? And then, you know, working in abroad, saving some money and coming to Africa to set up and all that. Just put it up as says. Thank you very much for being on my channel. Thank you for having me. All right. Hey, so after the conversation, I had to take Mickey to show him my fringua. So he went to my school to, you know, look at the, the, the library that we have built. I mean, he's been supportive of the library. So we had to park and pick this car because now the road to my school over there is... It's not, it's not really cool now. It's dusty and all that. So that's Mickey, his wife and his children. They are in Ghana right now, chilling and making sure that, you know, they have the, the Ghana vibe. You know, too much of staying in the UK. So he's here. The family is also here to start their life. And he's been doing a lot of projects. I mean, if you're an African and if you've traveled outside and you've made some money, I think you should come home and build something. He's done something beautiful. Maybe I'll interview him and then he will talk about it with you. So thank you very much for checking me 